Knowledge transfer is one of those topics that uh, doesn't get a lot of press in uh, the startup ecosystem. You know, everybody talks about building products, shipping solutions, uh, but then everybody also talks about exits. And exits ultimately are knowledge transfer uh, mechanism. Exits ultimately are about having the knowledge that is contained in a small company, whether it's knowledge around the market, the product, the customer, and bring that into large companies. Now, the mechanics around that vary. There's legal aspects such as uh, intellectual property and patents that get actually legally assigned and transferred. But a lot of it is just in the heads of people. And so what I wanted to talk about is really the flow of knowledge, the flow of what I'm going to call intellectual property. So the, the valuable knowledge, let's say, the property that the company has that is you know, in the intellect, in the knowledge base of the people, really from inception to uh, finish line of a, a company. And so inception in the case of Tandem Launch is often a university, it obviously in your case might not be, but there really will be a, a root idea or invention. There will be a sort of a founding concept, either a technological innovation or a business model or some sort of idea about the market that becomes really the foundation uh, idea of the company. And that's your first piece of knowledge right there. So your first step is to get that into the company. It might come directly with the founders where they have it in their head and they just bring it in. But more often than not, you have to think about how do you get all those pieces of knowledge? And, you know, in my case, uh, my first startup, uh, I spun it out of the University of British Columbia. And so we had several years of research in the university. And when we first left the building, so to speak, and literally we just didn't even leave campus, we just moved a few blocks down into an incubator center. Uh, that was already a challenge. Already we had lost a whole bunch of pieces that weren't readily apparent when we were planning the the exit. You know, there were other students in the lab, there were you know, faculty members, and there was a lot of embedded uh, knowledge and expertise that we had to replicate in the standalone entity. So one thing I always recommend to people is never make, make harsh transitions. You, you can make hard transitions operationally, you move to another building, you have your new team work separately, but you always want to ha maintain a uh, legacy connection, certainly a goodwill connection, but ideally a uh, some form of contractual connection uh, to your home base. So in this particular example, for example, we um, established a, a research contract, a collaborative agreement with the laboratory. It was, it was very small. We were a startup. We didn't have a lot of money, but we effectively uh, engaged some of the students that were left behind, so to speak, to continue that legacy flow. And that later turned into a very vibrant uh, collaborative agreement. And in fact, there's a, a research chair at the university today, even still after a decade, uh, that, you know, after multiple changes of ownership uh, with the large company that ultimately acquired uh, this venture uh, still maintains that collaborative link. So then once you have the technology in the company, the next stage of knowledge transfer is to push the information from the founders to the employees. And that's equally important and equally difficult, even though you think you're all in one building and this should be, you know, very straightforward. Obviously, we are now NUCO 14 and, you know, everybody in the NUCO should know what we're talking about. There's a giant knowledge gap between founders and employees. And, and it's often the most difficult to recognize for founders because they often have co-founders. So people who share the similar depth of knowledge that have talked and worked with each other for often quite a long time before they had a significant employee base. And so they all know these things intuitively. But your employees won't. Somebody who joins your company won't inherit all the history, won't inherit all the, the culture, the knowledge, the domain expertise. They will have to learn it from scratch. And in my experience, that requires conscious effort. That requires the setup of knowledge transfer systems inside your organization. And those can range from you know, simple things like a, an onboarding program. You know, at Tandem Launch, uh, we have a, a one-week onboarding program where we help people through presentations, but also through hands-on engagements with uh, people, you know, other employees, other people in the organization to get to know what's going on, to get a feeling for it. And to the point that we have a, a quiz at the end of the week, um, and nobody gets fired over the quiz, but it's a quiz where one of the obligations is that you've spent 15 minutes with every other employee just to talk about what they're doing. And you get some questions about, you know, what is everybody doing and what are the programs and what are the activities? And in fact, we, we do the, repeat the quiz, the exact same questions about two months later, 
just to check uh, not if the people have learned something, but if our program has worked. Do, you know, do we use that as a as a reference to see if uh, people have actually caught on to the core values and knowledge pieces that we want to convey? And that's obviously an ongoing effort. Uh, it's, it's important to do this right doing onboarding, but obviously you want to keep doing this and transfer this kind of knowledge uh, continuously into your organization, especially as you grow and scale. And then the next step in the chain of knowledge is to bring the knowledge usually to customers. Usually um, when you're as a start startup, when you're engaging with customers, the first thing you're doing is again transferring knowledge. You, you might think you're just shipping a product, uh, but in most cases, they're working with you because you have a unique solution, a unique concept. And with that uniqueness comes effectively an obligation to transfer the knowledge around, right? Whether that's explaining how to use your product or explaining how to integrate your product, if it's an enterprise or licensing solution, explaining how to integrate it into their own product chain or, or their workflow and so forth. And this is really valuable because at that point, you're also getting knowledge back. You're learning a lot about your customers. And so one recommendation I have is in those early customer engagements, really think of it from a knowledge management perspective. Send your people as much as you can to the customers, work collaboratively, embed them, but then also make sure that the people that go to the customer uh, push and bring knowledge back into your own organization. So uh, for example, one thing we like to do is when people travel and have deeper customer engagements, we like them to organize what we call lunch and learns. It's a uh, it's a weekly program where we invite either external speakers, so this is pure informational or entertainment, uh, but we also have internal speakers, and usually we encourage them to talk about trips they've just made or things they just learned from the big companies that, that they worked with, because again, it gives you a mechanism to diffuse knowledge into your organization and make your team smarter. And then last but not least in knowledge transfer is sort of the ultimate uh, transfer of information when you get acquired. Uh, I've... Uh, uh, been through this process myself, and it's very difficult when you're a small company, you're arriving at a much, much larger organization, an organization, in my case, the company that we, uh, that, that we sold our business to was uh, over 50 years old. They were a well-established company where the knowledge systems were completely self-contained. Most of the executives had been in the company for 20, 30 years. And so in that environment, pushing your knowledge into the system uh, requires a lot of effort. And again, the thing to do there is not to wait, because if you wait for knowledge transfer, if you wait for the people that don't know to ask, like your employees to ask the founders or your customers to ask you or your acquirer to ask your, your former company, your former team, they will never ask because they don't know what they don't know. So you have to be proactive. Uh, for example, uh, on my, just on my second day, a third day uh, in, in the new company, uh, I flew to their, their headquarter and I brought in all the... Uh, engineering directors and project managers and program managers that I could lay my hand on. I had maybe 20 people that I gathered together. Not only was it a great way to meet everybody who would be my new colleagues, um, but I arranged a, a half-day briefing on the history of our company, the products we had developed, the technology we had developed. And then afterwards, um, for those that were you know, more closely involved in, in our program that would sort of become actual collaborators within the organization, I made sure that both my engineering team and myself scheduled regular engagements with them over the next you know, six months, in fact, over the first full four years, where we would take time out to brief them on specific nuances or, or detailed elements of the technology. And this, this went way beyond the sort of onboarding mechanism that the, the HR and corporate development of the acquiring company had planned, but it really helped to embed uh, what we're doing inside the organization and find collaborators that could function efficiently with us and allowed us to function efficiently. So as you go through this chain, uh, if I were to summarize it in three sort of big words of advice that I would give to people that are managing knowledge, uh, which is really the main obligation of a founder, you know, you have to manage uh, people, money and knowledge, which is the vision of the people call it the vision of the company. That's sort of the, the fancy way of describing knowledge, but it's really the, the, the cultural core of the company. Uh, one, don't wait for people to ask. Always assume that everybody else uh, doesn't have the full information because generally speaking, they won't. As a founder, you know, you're sort of privileged to be in this hub where employees, customers, uh, acquirers, investors, everybody talk to you, but there are very few other people in the company that have that sort of information flow to them. And so it's your job to convey that. 
So don't wait for them to ask. Two, build a culture in your organization around knowledge transfer. Make sure that nobody's afraid to ask if they don't understand something. Make sure that your uh, leadership team constantly communicates what's going on. Uh, so for example, you know, we have a, an all hands meeting every Friday where not just across Tanamosh, but across all of our portfolio companies, you know, we share around the table with the entire staff uh, what's going on, what happened this week, what are the good news, what are the bad news, what's happening. Uh, and it's just a mechanism to give people informed and gives them an opportunity to ask questions about what's going on. And thirdly, and maybe most importantly, don't be afraid of sharing knowledge. Your organization will become stronger. It feels a bit scary to you know, give people bad news. It, it feels scary to say, you know, we thought we were going to get this deal, but it fell through. But in a startup, you can't hide it. So, so even though it's scary, uh, you have no way of avoiding that information leaking out. And you're much better off establishing a culture where it's openly provided to everybody in the company than sort of filters down through the rumor chain and gets effectively made worse. The best solution is to, in my opinion, is to share knowledge openly and directly. I mean, there will be some you know, some small number of things that are legally uh, impossible for you to share. You know, during acquisition, there are certain lockup mechanisms that prevent you from sharing specific deal details. But as much as possible, uh, bring that information out there. It will make your people smarter. And once you have smarter and more informed people, you will have a better company. So with that, good luck to all the aspiring knowledge transfer people and uh, build wonderful companies. Mm -hmm.